I've never crossed the line with anyone. This is not to say that there are not 11 women who I truly offended. There are. And for that, I deeply, deeply apologize. Mm, and we are likely to see more people come out after that, but we'll have to wait and see and keep you updated. But as you can see, we have a panel here, and if you're just joining us, we have to talk about <coughs> when does crossing the line really cross the line, and what does it look like, and what should you do if you're a victim of it? Well, we were joined by our panel who had us... Or they were with us in the last block, and they are Business Development Director Tiffany Johnson and Employment Attorney John Bell. Thank you guys both for staying with us to discuss the toxic works environment. And we want to start with the workplace harassment. Now, sometimes it's not just sexual advances. It can be other things as well. So, Tiffany, can you describe what some of those other situations may look like? Um, as far as, well... When you think about, um, it's, it's really when you make someone feel uncomfortable, and it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a sexual situation or a sexual harassment um, situation. Just making someone else feel uncomfortable um, while you're at work, it's inappropriate. Um, you have to be able to know how to separate personal from business, and and know how not to. To, to stay within the parameter in which your employer has set. Um, that's, what, that's why it's really important to have that workplace etiquette in mind um, and those trainings for your staff to ensure that, it could, that everyone's on the same page. And then also, let, you know, also have an open door policy when it comes to um, reporting inappropriate behavior at the workplace. So, John, once you report this inappropriate behavior at the workplace, what do you do if HR is not doing anything about it? They're like, okay, okay, and maybe they give them a slap on the hand, but it keeps happening. What are your legal steps that someone should take? So, document, document, document. Mm -hmm. Again, through emails, you can't, the emails don't just disappear. After you send the emails, you should print them out and maintain them in a folder and bring them home in case they do the wrong thing and terminate you. Uh, you should contact a lawyer. Okay, lawyers, I, I, get, I guide people through this all the time at no charge, and sometimes the employer does the right thing and there's no case, and I'm just happy that the person is in a better situation. Other times, unfortunately, the employer does the wrong thing, and they continue to discriminate. It could be race, age, religion, gender, mm. uh, disability, mm. sexual orientation, things of that nature, telling inappropriate jokes in the workplace, whatever it is. The critical thing is for an employer is if you find that the complaints were unfounded and don't rise to the level of sexual harassment, you still can't discipline the person who brought the complaint because, again, they're protected against retaliation. So even as, as for the employers out there listening, you should be working with the lawyer as well uh, because these things could be costly. It could cost a lot of money. And, and if you're the employee, the employee stands to gain a lot of money. They have pain and suffering damages, back pay, front pay, attorney's fees, punitive damages, and more. So what about those people that may cry wolf? Maybe they have a personal issue with a coworker and they want to get them in trouble. How can someone protect themselves if they've been falsely accused or so, was unaware that they had even offended somebody to begin with? So once the employee complains, an investigation to, should take place. If you truly didn't discriminate, didn't sexually harass, uh, that should come out based upon your statement and other people's statement. What got Governor Cuomo wasn't the fact that only one person complained after all these years. 11 people complained that was corroborated uh, through each other. So if you're acting appropriate in the workplace, chances are you're not going to get caught up in the investigation. And if you do, and if it's a fair and partial investigation, it should clear you. Mm. All right, so Tiffany, how would you advise people to get witnesses or allies without raising too many red flags? Um, I would advise them to actually speak with um, other people that may have been in the area or, um, you know, when, when the incident occurred, I would um, ask them to, the same way that the gentleman just said, as far as being able to um, document when and where the things are happening. Um, it might just be at the at the coffee um, station, you know, at the office. But you're not the only one. Um, 
but make your formal complaint, write it out, um, and list the details, and then turn it in, and then allow the employer to respond. All right, we have about a minute left. Can we get starting with John? Your last words of advice to someone who you know who may fear of uh, speaking out to, or coming forward because they're again just afraid of their jobs being lost. Yeah, so retaliation uh, is the, one of the strongest provisions there are in the law. The people who wrote the law envisioned that people might be fearful, so they are very strong retaliation provisions. So speak with a lawyer and protect yourself so you can take advantage of those provisions. When you do approach these witnesses, have them contact an attorney or your attorney so they can understand that even if I, if I witnessed sexual harassment but I wasn't sexually harassed and I say something to help the employee, I'm not protected under the same retaliation statute. So I can't be fired, disciplined, or my working conditions can't change based on the fact that I'm corroborating an employee's position versus an employer. All right, and Tiffany? I agree, I agree. Um, but one thing that I can honestly say before it gets to, you gotta allow the employer um, to do their job, to, to respond. Um, we provide workplace training, um, workplace etiquette training, sexual harassment training, all those different types of things to our staff. And we do have that open door policy um, with our company. It's really important that staff know that they are supported in anything that happens to them while at work. Great advice from both of you. Tiffany Johnson and John Bell, thank you so much for joining us on this so important topic.